Hello and welcome to episode 6 of Let's Play FTB Monster with me, Gredista. And how do you like this? Coming on pretty well, isn't it? Yeah, it looks nice. These are chisel blocks made out of marble. And we've now completely enclosed this. All the way around, smooth glass. Looks nice and airy. Lots of space for stuff. Obviously, we've uh, we just pop in here for a sec. We've got the um, smeltery, and oh, I need to go get some more lava. Uh, I'm not going to pick those up now. Similarly, we've got space inside these other rooms too, so there should be yeah enough room in these for some stuff that we're going to get on with this level, this particular episode. And I've begun digging down here from an underground area, which is normally where I put. Um, power and stuff like that but as you can see it's kind of under the ocean which is um, I've been looking for ways to empty the ocean um, there are ways to do it but my main problem is I kind of like the ocean so I kind of like to refill it and that's where the problem comes being able to repeatedly empty or or refill the uh, the place is actually not too uh, not too easy. There are things like Billcraft pumps to remove the um, the ocean, and that I certainly could do. But I have to surround it with walls first. Uh, there's MF MFFS, uh, which will remove the water easily enough, but I can't pump it back in because it literally removes the water. Poof, gone. There's the water, and as you can see, and if I drop it into the water for a second, this, this iron wood helm which I, you make out of the uh, live wood live root things in the those um twilight forest where all the hollow hill was if i drop down here it should be a little bit easier to see than normal hopefully youtube doesn't render this completely uh black but as you can see i can drop down to the ocean floor so it's not too far down but it's still something like yeah maybe 15 blocks Let's have a look. I'm on 57. This is 64. Okay, so seven blocks then. So, yeah. Uh, plus, I also can't breathe underwater. So, I can't just run around down there or slowly walk, as the case may be, down there. I'm going to have to do something else. So, I'll think about that for a while. If you have any way of doing that, there isn't something that will permanently remove all the water or isn't laborious or doesn't destroy the water and can be easily pumped back in feel free to let me know please leave a comment i've been more than happy to hear about that um what are we going to do this episode well um yeah let's show you a few things i've been doing first of all um i'm i've been sick of um, going up and down those stairs so i improved things a little bit We've jumped up to the next kind of technology level now uh, with these elevators from open blocks. You can cover look color them whatever you like, but you have to make sure that each the one below this must be the same color as this one, etc. Otherwise, it won't let you go down there. And the way we make those is just with some wool wrapped around an ender pearl. Uh, do we have any wool? Probably don't. I got some wool, but probably not enough to demonstrate it. Anyway, uh, let's just have a look at that. Elevator block, just any kind of wool wrapped around an ender pearl. And uh, as we can see upstairs, we've got, got quite a few ender pearls just growing uh, straightforwardly. So there's that. And uh, if you just hold shift or whatever your sneak button is, no more running up and down the stairs. I uh, must do that sooner in the next series, I think, whichever one my next one is. I normally do it fairly early, but I think I just got obstinate in this one and <laughs> decided to just keep running up and down stairs. Um, I've also, um, I'm not sure if I've shown this, the output of the gold chest that's producing stone for me is going into an ender chest. And if you haven't used ender chests before, uh, the basic chest is this color combination on the top. If you make another ender chest with the same color combination, they are both the same inventory. So you can use that for item transport of extremely long distances. So what are we going to do this this episode? I think 
well, there's a few things I can do. Uh, first of all, if I haven't mentioned it already, sorry if I have, um, I went into the config for Rotorycraft, disabled engine sounds. They were driving me demented, not because I couldn't mute them, because, you know, I can with these sound um, mufflers, but because doing so was unreliable. Every so often they just pop up with extremely loud things, and that must be annoying for you people watching on YouTube. So... Yes, engine sounds off. If you like them in your own world, feel free. Uh, I kind of like the engine sounds. It's just that there's just no way of dealing with them properly um, with that bug in there. So, yeah. So, where do we go from here? Well, first of all, probably best to sleep. I've been thinking about expanding the magic crops. Again, with the automatic farming from, from Rotary Craft, that I'm not going to do on AI because it would just be literally reproducing everything from the steam engine there, right in the middle, to the fan. And in fact, you don't even need these shafts, just put the fan in front of it, and then just putting pipe, pipe, water pipes that way a row of steam engines and a row of fans. Uh, you may be able to upgrade, well, we should be able to upgrade the fans later, but for right away, um, not worth worrying about. We'll just use multiple fans, multiple steam engines, and that's going to need quite a bit of iron. So, if you haven't got a lot of iron yet, best to go and get some. Now, well, let's sleep this off. So, what I was going to do is start building up a supply of um, lubricant. That's the word. <laughs> Couldn't remember what the word was called. Um, I've shown you how to make it already. Um, in fact, we just really use the setup to start up our steam engine. Um, oh, sorry, not steam engine, our extractor. We have this gasoline engine, and we had a grinder in front of it. So the gasoline engine needs uh, ethanol crystals uh, to make it, and we need somewhere to store that and transport ethanol crystals, we need somewhere to transport lots of other stuff, so should we do that? Or is there anything else we should do? Um, somewhat caught. There's lots of stuff I want to get done, but just not enough time quickly to get that sorted. I should also start on magic. In fact, let's, let's start that now because it's worthwhile starting it early. Um, we don't need to do anything special. Just get a thermometer from Thormcraft. Uh, any two gold ingots, piece of glass, and any two shards. It used to be much harder to make, but uh, the mod author's wisdom has prevailed there. Uh, that's fine. And where are my shards? I'll just take two of the blue ones, easy enough. Uh, oh, can I? Oh, I don't have any smooth glass on me, never mind. I made tons of that stuff. Um, there we go, thermometer. What I've also done and made, well gonna made is certus quartz seeds now this is again magic crops you have to upgrade through and uh, I don't think I've demonstrated this so let's demonstrate it you start off by making a weak infusion stone and that's pretty simple you have to give up a diamond to start, or an emerald to start. I actually find an emerald much cheaper for me to use an emerald. Wrap it with essence dust, and that's you get that from essence ore. Um, so if I wanted to create one, I just wrap that around a diamond or an emerald. And you start off with your weak infusion stone. Now, the weak one, if you surround it, uh, if you, I'm not sure if it is surrounding it, or an X. It's an X. That's, well, cross. If you do this pattern with every tier with its corresponding infusion zone, for example, there's a normal one above this and a strong one above that and an extreme one above that, each tier with its corresponding tier of dust, or weak essence in this case, will create the next tier up of the essence. So if I do, if I shift click this, 
you'll note I can't further upgrade it with a weak confusion stone. But what you can do is apply this stuff, the weak essence, to seeds. And if I uh, let me find the recipe for it. Nope, no. It's coal seeds. Yeah, we can do that. Yeah. So our upgrade, if we had, oh yeah, we've got some coal. If we did that, we'd make coal seeds. And they can be used to create um, coal. You just plant them and you get essence back out of it. Um, uh, it's course called coal essence. It's grey. And this process, as you go up through weak and normal and strong, will upgrade seeds, depending on what you put in the outer spaces here, with the particular tier. So, I'm a few tiers up by now. Um, one of the things I've got, obviously, is redstone, glowstone essence. And now, if I just drop this in place, um, let's get rid of that for a second. I should be able to make, um, or at least... Oh uh, yeah, that's still going to make a noise, unfortunately. So that's not an engine, I don't think you can turn that off. Essence crop, cool. Yeah, let's go for essence. So I've just replaced the essence crop with surface quartz. And the essence crop is in here. Essence seeds. I've also got some earth seeds. And it's the earth seeds, uh, or for any, of the, any of these first tier, like the coal seeds I was talking about. You'd wrap your weak stone with that essence. And then it will give you a strong uh, normal stone in addition to your weak stone. So what you end up with after you upgrade each, well, you try well, you're not really upgrading, you're more like copying. You start off with a weak, you end up with a regular, you move to a strong, and then there's more tiers. But each time you upgrade, you actually get an extra one, so you don't have to worry too much about these, um, too much about losing them. Uh, mainly because you're still going to need that first tier, weak one, to create more um, of this weak essence. And uh, let's see if I see what the recipes for essence dust are. Are there any more? No. So if you've already got a stone, upgrade all of this stuff into at least the weak stuff. And then decide for yourself what you're short on, whether you're short on coal, if you're short on, um, what's the first tier? First tier will be also be redstone, glowstone, and a couple of other things. Uh, the tier I've just got to is stuff like iron and gold, and yeah, you can grow iron and grow gold. Um, also stuff like uh, surface quartz, obviously you've seen. Um, other things of the same tier, copper and all the other st stuff like that, uh, blaze powder, uh, gas tiers you can make with this tier. The next tier up again, I think then it starts to get to diamond seeds and that's <laughs> because um, to take this stuff and to move it to this is 4 to 1. And it's 4 to 1 on the next tier which produces one of these. And it's 4 to 1 again to get to the extreme one. And then there's uh, maybe another one above that. So each time it drops down four to one, which means you don't end up with very many at all of this stuff. I and mean, that's the next tier up. Uh, sorry, regular. So yeah, four, four, four. And then oh, there's definitely another one, four. That's like the, the, the highest tier there. So it's probably going to take you a while. don't think that's a quick thing. But once you start being able to grow crops, um, it's kind of an alternative way out of mining. If you want resources, you can grow them instead of going mining them. Somewhat like um, playing something like Agrarian Skies, where you, you don't really have to do any mining. Anyway, that's enough for me waffling on. Let's go ahead and get something done. Um, have I decided what I'm going to do yet, though? Let's just dump all of this stuff. In fact, it's about time to create a sorting system, or at least to start getting organized towards one. Uh, I've got a block of gold, which has got to be handy. I should also get some iron, which we can pop downstairs for.
Why you say? Well, because I don't want small chests. I want the larger version. Which means the upgrades. Yeah, that should do for now. I'm also going to need plenty of wood. Which, knowing me, I've probably forgotten. Fine, let's go and grab a couple of trees. Not going to cut the great wood down. Sorry, but not dedicated enough to uh, make chests from great wood planks. Uh, in case you don't know what great wood does, it's a very useful wood with Thorncraft. And speaking of Thorncraft, uh, just if you make one of these, just start scanning everything that you see. There we go. And so, uh, what you want to do is, there we go. You start scanning some of the basic, most common stuff, and you work your way up to the higher end stuff. And it won't let you scan things until you have all of the elements that you need. Um, so, stone. That's a simple item. Sand. Oh, sand maybe. Yeah, there we go. See, it still won't let you scan until... Uh, until you have all of the aspects. You see all those aspects down at the bottom right. Um, each block in the world is made up of one or more aspect. And in order to scan it, you have to have all of the things. For example, some aspects are made up of other aspects. So if it's a complex aspect made up of, let's say, two things, and you've not scanned one of those two things previously, the things that make up the aspects of the block that you're scanning, if that makes sense, hopefully it does, um, then you are going to need to go and scan the, pr the prior or something that's made of the material, the prerequisite aspect, the, the one that comes, that's one of the ingredients for the one that you're trying to scan. I know that does sound a bit complicated, sorry, but you, you'll get the idea once you start understanding aspects a little bit more. Um, there's more up there, but let's not worry about that for now. Let's go and put these things together. How do I do this with a book? Let's keep up ha keep happening happening to make worse the That's just annoying. It's done that to me before. It's definitely not me. <laughs> I just... I, I've... Uh, yeah, how does that... You see, that definitely isn't there until I go and look at the book stand again. See, because there's cobblestone there. That's definitely a bug. Sorry. There's a miscraft bug there. Right. Um... Now we're going to need to pick a quadrant for our sorting system. It doesn't matter too much which one. Uh, eventually, I'll probably have the kind of storage off down though these four hallways uh, off down the the ramps going down into the ocean. I wish it would load the world a little bit faster. But for now, I'm probably going to need to put them in one of these these rooms. And it doesn't really matter which one. For the moment, let's just put it opposite the um, the smeltery. That's a good place. So we're going to want to make some chests. This should be eight. Eight chests. And I want a short of iron to make that into iron chests. 
seven will have to do. And some of them into gold. You don't need all of them to be gold chests, but it's kind of handy for some of them. And initially, um, it shouldn't really matter too much how you lay them out. Um, we can just put them along here for now. So let's say we want, I actually want an overflow chest. So that will be large. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, and then a wood one. Lots of room in these. Uh, we should probably make some signs too. I'll put the signs in later. Now we've just got to consider how we're going to get stuff into these things. Uh, let's scan this. Ooh, and oops. Don't have any other blocks in here. There's a number of different sorting systems out there. And there are a few that are quite simple. And other ones that just aren't. They're, they're far more complicated. Uh, see, I'm chuck loading the area. And I've certainly shown off the extra utilities one before. That is the transfer nodes. Um, there we go. And transfer pipe. Quite easy to make. Transfer nodes aren't too bad to make as well. That's, um, that's a redstone block, any kind. That's fine. Yeah. Um, it's a very simple system. Uh, in fact, so simple that I'm often tempted to use it all the time. It's really quite nice um, and easy to set up. Maybe you should start with that one and then move to the more complicated systems. Um, in in my first series, I did that. Uh, I moved it to A eventually. Second series, I go in skies. I just went straight. In fact, I don't even think I had a sorting system. No, I didn't. So, yeah, I've, I've been fond of this, these particular blocks to make a sorting system. But, I think I should probably branch out. Yeah, we should branch out. Do something entirely new. Um, and there's a couple of other ways of sorting. Um, I have done build craft before which is an old way of doing things and it's it's a bit laborious and a bit annoying but we also have well, let's hope we have in um in monster logistics pipes this is a very very customizable system um lots of ways to do auto crafting before we get to ae systems or me systems if you've ever used those before you know what i'm talking about if you don't don't worry that's coming up um but initially what we're going to want to try and do with these pipes what we really want is to dump everything that we mine up or otherwise drop and we want to just drop it in a chest somewhere and let's it could be here for example and i'm out of chests mm, right <laughs> uh never mind so we drop it in an input chest and it's automatically going to get fed into the system. And first, all that we want is for it to sort out things into the relevant chest. So let's say we want a chest for ores, a chest for yeah, plants, a chest for um, basic building blocks, you know, sand, maybe some stone, just so it sorts them out. And then we know which one to go to and open it and we have lots of ores in here. That's the first stage. Second stage is then to pull the ores out and push them automatically into uh, something that will process them. So whether we do that five times um, or quintupling, quintupling, quintupling from Rotorycraft, or whether we just go ahead with you know smelteries like this, 
or some expansion. Either way, we're just going to pull out of a chest. Or so rather, we're not going to pull out of a chest. We're going to intercept it before it hits the chests, send it somewhere, and then the stuff that hits the chest will be the output. So the ingots, the blocks, you know, stuff like this, will just start piling up in these chests, and that's that's exactly what we're looking for. So largely without realizing it, I'm actually 25 minutes into the episode, um, just updating you with on what's uh, what I've been actually up to. So let's get the first steps. We're not going to actually deal with the sorting system in this episode, but we are going to deal with the inputs. Um, I may not actually have an input chest per se, although an extra one wouldn't be too bad. Um, what I actually could do with having instead is an ender pouch. There we go. So we're going to need some blaze powder, wool, leather. Yeah, I think we have all that back at the other base. Probably want to make two of them. And I could get more out of this blaze rod with pulverizers, but. I've got a blaze spawner near my nether base, so that's okay. Uh, one, two, three, six of those. And some wool. Now I've just got to remember how to change the colors of an ender pouch. See, if I right click this one, it's the default frequency, which is my stone that I've been making um, up there from the uh, sugar cane. Right, next step, we may actually want at least one more in the chest. But yeah, because we, we definitely will still need that input chest. Fine, so what blaze rods, which I have. To obsidian, which I probably don't in a chest. Okay. Obsidian. Where is the closest place for that, I wonder? Um, just pop around here for some water. for the last time going down these stairs. <laughs> we did skip a lot of stairs, but um, nearly, nearly finished with them. I wonder whether there's any lava down here. I can just should be able to nab some obsidian left. Yeah, there we go. So you'll do. And is it still? Nope. Good. Try to make sure that it isn't still lava under there. It were quite bad. May as well just grab a couple more. And why not? Let's just take this with us. Those were cheap. And we can go back by the book through the nether. There we go. So we want some 
And the chests. I need four blaze rods for one. I'm going to need some more wool. Usually at this point I find out I don't have any wool left. I could run it to the sheep, but it's just... Ah, oh, nope, plenty. And... One of you. Uh, did I destroy that chest? Oh well. And then end the chest. And we're probably going to want to colour it, so... Um... Got a rye? I want to die. Do? Die. Die. We want... I wonder... Yeah, that's just lapis. Okay. So. Lapis we got plenty of. And bone meal. Got far too much of it, in fact. Bone meal. Got nine of. Which is quite apt. I've got 18 likely die now with and a chest. We'll just drop it down. Right click our dies onto the tabs. And now instead of being the white one, which would be the um, stone inventory, it's now an entirely new one, which is the light blue one. So if we pop back over to our well, it will be our main base. We can... Um, where should we put it? That's the overflow, so... I don't know, maybe here. It doesn't really matter too much. We can shift it later. So anything we want to put into our system, no matter where it is, wants to go into this chest. And how do we do that? Remember, we've got two ender pouches. Right now, if I use an ender pouch, it's the wrong inventory. So let's shift right click on this ender, ender chest. And now it's remapped. If I just go over here and open, you see the ender chest opens up over on the left hand side. And we can drop in pretty much anything. Oakwood. White stone, wool, from wherever we are in the world, really handy. And here it is in our chest. But right now, of course, uh, that's three blocks. There we are. We don't have a way of getting it over and into our other chests. Now we can do that just with other item ducks I've shown you before and you can somewhat sort with item ducks if I show you over here by the way um, you just pop in here remember the pneumatic servos this is a filter and in this case it's this is a fluid duct but if we just went to here you can change this to whitelist and then just add particular things in here and that would let you just filter it in or out the things you want in each particular chest. Only problem is you can only do nine things, which is horrible. Um, unless you happen to want just a particular chest. Well, for ores, it's not too bad. Of course, your main ores, there's probably about six, maybe a couple more. That'd be okay. But everything else? No. And then you could do things with like adding an extra item duct and then just having two filters to two inputs on one chest it gets very complicated and not worth bothering about so now we've got an input way of input inputting to the system no matter where we are um, the next step is to actually start building 
the sorting of this. So we need to pull stuff out of this and then put it in to any number of other places. And that might include a second ender chest, which we can then use to process ores from. However, that's probably going over the end of this episode. We're, well, we're just over the half hour mark now. Uh, next episode, which I'm going to be recording right after this one, so I may even get them both up on the same day or next day. Uh, we're going to go through and start building the sorting system. Just uh, first uh, basic version, then an ore processing on top of that, and we'll use our rotary craft uh, setup and, and bring that up to date from our initial demonstration of it. And from there, we'll probably do other stuff as well. Uh, auto crafting is a, a very good following on point from the sorting system. Auto crafting is its own challenge. Um, that's going to take a few episodes to go through all of the possible combinations. So hopefully you'll stay with me. Um, feel free to subscribe. Leave a comment below, particularly if you have any uh, requests or things you'd like to see. And I will see you next episode. Thanks for watching.